the antithesis against all the idiocy of the film schools worldwide. The only thing that I announced that I would teach, and I actually teach you when you come and attend the Rogue Film School, I teach you how to pick safety locks um, <laughs> with uh, the surgical tools. And I teach you a second thing, uh, and that is how to forge documents. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Pizcaraldo, for example, wouldn't have, oh no, Aguirre, wouldn't have been done uh, without massive forgeries. <laughs> At that time, there was a military dictatorship uh, in Peru, and I had a, uh, a shooting permit, finally, which was signed by the president of the republic himself. <laughs> of course, I signed it. <laughs> massive stamps on it, and, and it was on, on uh, official paper, which of course also was a forgery uh, of the chancellery of, of the president. So it looked beautiful, and if you don't learn that, you shouldn't start to make films. <laughs> and, um, so uh, otherwise, but I, I have moved away more from the Rogue Film School because now uh, I prefer to do workshops. Um, young filmmakers who are already professional filmmakers who have done their first films, uh, they come, they all congregate normally outside of their comfort zone and I assemble them, for example, in the jungle of Peru or in Cuba or on a Canary Island, which is completely volcanic. And they have to make a film within nine days. They have maximum nine days. And then on the 10th day, at the latest, they have to show their film. And they all have to deliver, and they're absolutely relentless. It's a no-nonsense thing to join in there, and every single one so far has delivered the film. Um, and you're not allowed to come with a little screenplay or a little idea for a documentary, because I say keep it all uh, hidden away, because I give you the frame within which you have to do the film. And that's something that happens, it's a film industry is functioning like this. All of a sudden you're confronted with something and you immediately have to, you immediately have to function, immediately have to be inventive, you immediately have to cast, set up a story, uh, start filming, you have to edit it on your laptop. The films have to be very short, between five and 10 minutes, but still it's, it's quite, quite some task. And, and I have seen, uh, for example, members of there, there was uh, a young uh, lady and on the third day, I still see her sitting in lotus seat and meditating. And I said to her, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm meditating to hope for inspiration. I said, that's not what, what filmmaking is all about. You have to deliver right now. Get out of your position. Go out and start shooting anything but shoot. And she says, yeah, what should I shoot? I said, you have to shoot something. She actually delivered a fairly good film. After all, scrambled and did a fairly good film. Not the very best, but it was, <laughs> no, it was impressive because uh, she was three, three days, had already wasted three days out of nine days. And uh, you see, you, you have to, when you're into filmmaking, you have to instantly, instantly start to, uh, to, uh, to invent a story. If I ask you, tell me the story of this bottle, you have to do it within in 10 seconds flat, you have to start to tell me. And I, was, I had a situation like this in Lanzarote, which is volcanic, and there was a door, a big uh, uh, wall in the door, and there were cubic lava, black lava rocks inserted. And I said to, to the filmmakers, I, I said, you have to tell me in, in five seconds flat the story of that cubic stone up here. And I said, do you have a story? Do you have a story? Do you have a story? None of them had a story. And then somebody asked you, what, what story would I have? So, well, I didn't think about, I should tell the story, but I had to tell the story of the stone. And the story of the stone was, 
this was a very nice boy and he was bullied by, by his peers and they trampled on him so long until he became cubic <laughs> and he froze and they, they put him in this doorway and, and, and he cursed them. He cursed them and said, you will end up in the volcano right over there and you will spew fire until the rest of the day. So that's my story. And I was, so what is yours? So, and what, what is your story about this very bottle? And you have to, you have to do that in not more than 10 seconds deliberation.